Today, we are talking All Fangs Death Hole. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Seven Days to Die is a survival game, and it gets its name because every seven days, a giant horde of zombie jerks come to tear you to pieces. Every seventh night, starting at 10 p.m. or 2200, this game has what is called the Blood Moon Horde. An absolutely insane feature of Seven Days to Die where the game will send wave after wave of zombie jerk to your doorstep. There's no running, there's no hiding, they will always know where you're at, they will always come and find you, and they will always try to eat you. One of the main goals of Seven Days to Die is to build yourself a base that is able to stand up to these Blood Moon hordes. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions asking me about my personal playstyle, how I actually approach the Blood Moon hordes, and specifically about one of my base designs that I have used in several of my playthroughs. I'm speaking about, of course, the Death Hole. So today, I'm going to demonstrate exactly how to build this awesome horde base. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Death Hole. A simple yet elegant design that is extremely effective at fending off the zombie jerks. Let me give you a quick tour of the Death Hole and then we will get into actually building one. So as you can see, this entire structure is built out of steel. So this is pretty much the finished version. Once you get it up to steel, there's really nowhere else to go. It's as strong as it's gonna be, but the Death Hole, generally speaking, works like this. The zombies come up the stairs here, and there is one little hole where they can go. All you do as a player is you come inside, you open up the hatches, and you can either use melee to kill the zombie jerks, or if you prefer firearms, stand a little bit further back and fire away. Simple as that. The zombies go up the stairs, they try to pour in the death hole, they come through this little hole here, they have to get through the hatches in order to get to you, creating a perfect little bottleneck where you can slay the zombie jerks over and over again. It's an extremely fun design, because not only is it safe, relatively, but you also get to get up close and personal. You're not picking them off from a mile away. In my opinion, it's just it's just so much more fun that way. People ask me about my play style. I, I prefer to be up close and personal with the zombie jerks. I love smashing them in the face with a club. The new steel club is probably my favorite new weapon in Seven Days to Die. So I absolutely love being able to just uh, pop open a couple of these hatches, park myself here, watch them just pour into the death hole here, and just continually smack them in the face with my club. I absolutely love that. And this design is perfect for that kind of, of play style. So let me give you a, a little rundown of some of the features. Uh, you've got a nice, simple stairway here. You have the ramps on the side here that kind of funnel them into the opening. And one important thing that, that you have to make sure you add is right here, I don't know if you can see it, these are actually plates sitting on the top here. So if we open up this hatch, the hatch will occupy this block here, and the plates will occupy this block here. That way, zombie dogs can't jump through. So you've got the hatch on the bottom and the plate on the top. This is only a two-block uh, gap here. That way, the zombies can't jump and get through the hole. You're, you are controlling the flow of the zombies, controlling exactly where they go. That's very beneficial for you as a player, because if you can control the zombie pathing, you can uh, make sure that you can slay them in the most efficient way and still have fun doing it. Like I said, this is an up close and personal base, which um, is, like I said, my play style. That's how, that's how I like to play. Um, up top here, we've got two solid steel blocks here. The reason for that is because you don't want the zombies to be able to jump and get on top. If they get on top, they can tunnel their way down. Although generally speaking, they don't really try that because having to get through... Uh, two steel blocks, full steel blocks, and and, and then a, uh, a a plate is much more difficult than having to break down uh, one hatch. Generally speaking, the zombie jerks will take the path of least resistance. 
They will try to get to you as quickly as they can. For some reason, the zombies in this game have uh, engineering degrees where they absolutely automatically know the structural integrity of the blocks or the, the uh, durability of each of the blocks, and they will always pinpoint the weakest point. It's crazy. I swear every single one of the zombies in this game went to MIT or something. But uh, so that's the, the point of this game or of this design. You want to make sure it's high enough so that even when the zombies are stacked up here, they can't jump up on top. And you'll notice I also set my first hatch in one block. That way the zombies will actually come up here. And if they do start jumping here, they're just gonna bonk their head on the top here. Uh, if you set your hatch there, then they will stop here and they have free reign to jump and pile on top of each other and it could be a headache. So it's best, your best bet is to set this back one block. And then out in the back here, we have our vulture defenses, just a couple of SMG turrets sitting on top of a pillar to take care of the vultures. That's a late game addition. Early in the game, I'm gonna show you when we do our construction, I'm gonna show you an early early game method that, that's very cost effective that'll help take care of the, the vultures. And then underneath, we've got our pretty much three pillar system. We've got our back pillar, our middle pillar, and then the front pillar here. But this is four blocks high, uh, and then I put in the little nice decorative arches. Those are not really necessary. They're just there for aesthetic reasons. And I haven't painted or anything like that. This is just a bare bones structure of the death hole. So that's the uh, that's the functionality, that's the death hole in a nutshell. This is, like I said, this is the, the end game version. Uh, but th what's great about this is you can build this out of wood or flagstone, and it's just as effective, especially in the beginning of the game. You can build this out of uh, really cheap materials. It does not take many materials at all to build, and it is extremely, extremely effective. So let's go ahead and let's get started in building the death hole. The very first one I'm going to build is actually going to be out of wood. It's extremely simple to do. So all you want to do is you want to clear yourself off a nice um, piece of, of a nice area in order to build on. And I want to show you guys a little trick here. It's always a good idea to flatten out your building area before you start building. So all you do is just put down some wood frame blocks and you'll notice as I was putting those down, that the ground kind of lifts up and levels out. That's what you want. You want to try to get this as level as possible before you start building. And it's as simple as throwing down some wood frame blocks. And that, that's another good way to take care of the, uh, the grass as well if you don't want to punch it all. Although these guys here, the woody bushes, stones, uh, aloe vera, yucca fruit, that kind of stuff, you actually do have to punch. But it's a good idea before you start building just take some frames and uh, level out the area. It'll make your building a lot easier to do. Plus it looks better in my opinion. Just toss down some frames, level off that ground before you actually get to, uh, get to building. But I've pretty much gone ahead and uh, um, built up a nice level section here so I won't spend any time. I just wanted to show you that trick real quick so we're going to build our uh, new death hole right beside our finished death hole. So that way you guys can see the difference in the two. We're going to do one that you can do on day one with no, no, no issues whatsoever. This is going to be a very simple, easy to do build. And I'm going to take you from the very beginning all the way to the finished product. And what's great about this design is you can upgrade as you go. So you can start with wood. And in the end, you can end off with a steel structure. Very easy to do. Uh, and it takes next to no materials in order to build the, the initial, the original design. So what we're going to do is we are going to, let's pick our center point here. Let's do uh, right there. So you're going to start off with your back pillar. And it is going to be three blocks wide. And now we're going to go five blocks in between. So one, two, three, four, five. This is going to be your second pillar here, three blocks wide. And then we're gonna go five more blocks, one, two, three, four, five. And we are going to put our front pillar. All right, there we go. So now you've got your three pillars in place. So next what you wanna do is you want to build up five blocks high. So that's one, two, three, four, and five, and then complete your pillar. 
There you go. That's your pill, your first pillar done. Now we'll go ahead and create the next two. All right, there we go. So now we have our three pillars, five blocks high. Now we are gonna go ahead and create the floor of our death hole. And it's very simple to do. The fifth block at the top, all we're going to do is connect the two pillars. Just like that. That's what we're looking for right there. Okay, do the same thing on this uh, this side here. We're gonna connect all three pillars together. Now you don't have to worry about the structural integrity of this bad boy. Wood frame blocks can hold up to eight different wood frame blocks. Since these are only five apart, you don't have to worry about uh, collapsing it collapsing before you get the, uh, the floor finished. So you don't have to start from one side and stop halfway through and, and then go back to the other side. Like some other builds, uh, you, you have to do that. But not with, the, not with this, because it's only five blocks apart. You can uh, span that gap easily. But that is the bare bones of the um, support system and the walkway for the death hole. So now we're going to go ahead and put in our stairs. That way we can get back, we can get up there. And since we're doing the stair system, um, it is important to actually upgrade, the, especially the blocks that are going to be hit, hidden. So the center blocks. You don't have to worry about them too much because they're not going to be touched. I would not leave them as, as frames. I would at least upgrade them to the first level of wood if you're going to be building out of wood. Or if you're building out of flagstone, go ahead and upgrade them to cobblestone before you, you uh, bury them off here. For this purpose, I'm just going to go straight wood. This is going to be a, a very easy, straight wood build. I'll show you just how simple the, the design is. But when you're building your stairs, what you want to do is start at the bottom and build your way up and you want to leave the very last block open. You see how that one is um, is open? That's the way that's the way you want to leave it. Go ahead and upgrade the center column here, okay? And then do that again. Start at the bottom. Work your way up. And again, Leave that center, or the, leave the uh, top level open. Upgrade the center portion here. And we go again. There we go. Leaving that block open. Upgrade the center. And there we go. So that is the basic walkway. So now what we can do is we can go to our shapes and we can switch to wood stairs. That's what we're looking for. And we put those in. Now you'll see why we upgraded the center column. It's because you can't, once you put the stairs in, you actually can't reach those. So make sure and get those upgraded, the center column, get them upgraded a little bit. Once you get everything in, like I said, you don't have to worry about the center column because it's not, it's not really gonna be touched by anything. There we go, and there, there, and there. So there's our staircase, nice and simple. Zombie jerks can come up. All right, so before we go ahead and start building up, let's get this the uh, the blocks here upgraded. Like I said, we're just gonna go to basic wood. Uh, this is just gonna be a very simple design. Now I will tell you, the parts that you want to be most concerned with with regards to your build are going to be the pillars, the stairway, and then the entrance, which we'll get to here in a second. Those are the things that you want to be the absolute strongest that you can, because those are the ones that either support the structure or uh, are have the tendency, the, the highest likelihood, to be uh, smacked around by the zombie jerks. So let me go ahead and get this uh, finished upgrading and then we will get up top and we will continue building our death hole. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So we've got our stairway, we've got our pillars, and we have our main walkway in place. Now let's go ahead and switch shapes back to our wood frame blocks. And we're gonna start in the back and work our way forward. So the actual inside or the top section of the death hole is four blocks high. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four. That's how high you want the top section to be. So once you get your back pillars in place here, there we go. Now the rest of this you can do from the ground. You wanna leave a two block gap here, that way you can put your escape hatch. So if all of your hatches break, you don't wanna get stuck in the death hole because it will be death for you. You always wanna give yourself an escape hatch, uh, put a door on the back here, that way you can get out. And now we are going to just go ahead and uh, fill in the walls. 
So we'll throw the wood frame blocks down here. All right, and you wanna leave this last one here uh, open. You don't wanna place a block on this last one here. So we'll go to the other side. There we go. So now our structure is starting to come together. So what you wanna do is build up the walls all the way up to the top. Build up the sides first. So let me go ahead and get these all filled out. And uh, as soon as I get all the wood frames slapped down, I'll come back and show you what it looks like before we do some upgrading. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. So I've got both of my sides done here and uh, you can go ahead and upgrade those how, whenever you want. Uh, one thing I will caution you, the, the, uh, the corner blocks here can be tricky. Uh, so you might want to take out the two back blocks here and then upgrade the walls like this first before you continue with the build and then put your uh, two blocks back. There we go. So you always want to make sure you, otherwise you can up, you can like nerd pull up and upgrade them from the outside. That works as well, but go ahead and uh, let's upgrade our walls and then we will get our ceiling in place. So let me get this all upgraded. And uh, once I get it upgraded, I will come back and show you what it looks like and we'll start on the next step. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, got the walls all nice and upgraded. So now we're gonna go ahead and put in the ceiling. Now you wanna do the ceiling one layer at a time. There we go. And upgrade before you put in the second layer. There we go. Now let's put in layer number two. And we will upgrade that. There we go, guys. Look at that. So now our death hole is starting to look a little better. We've got our, our pillars done. We have our stairs done. We have our walls done with the ceiling in there. So now we just need to add in the finishing touches. The so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to switch shapes here. We are looking for the wood ramp. There we go, wood frame ramps. We wanna go to advanced rotation and we want this the ramps to sit just like this. And those are gonna go all the way up. And we come to the other side and same thing, all the way up. There we go. So now we have our front section here. Uh, let's go down here real quick and get our stairwell put in. So you want to look for the stairs here. There we go, the stair corner. That's the block you want and it's upside down. All right, let's go back to simple rotation. There we go. And you want one stair like that, one like that, and then over here, one there and one there. So that make that gives the zombies a nice and simple uh, path up the stairs. That way they won't get stuck on the corners. They'll just uh, go right up and you don't have to worry about them getting stuck here and getting mad and angry and start banging on stuff. So those corner stairs are very, very important. It'll make your life a lot easier. So for wood, um, you can actually build this next part out of wood plates. You're gonna go, wanna go advanced rotation and we want those to sit on the top, just like that. And you wanna go back at least five blocks, I would say probably six. That's two, three, four, five, six. Later on in the game, you can actually build um, the iron sheets, or if you want, you can actually build the, here, let me show you real quick. You can actually grab a couple of these. These are the uh, wood fences and railings. And I will go ahead and just craft one of those and uh, show you what you can do with these. So, all right, so you can just set one of these up here and then upgrade it. Boom, and that that now you can up continually upgrade uh, a, a through the process. So that's another way you can do it. You can either do it out of plates or you can make the wood fences and railing block and make it a little bit smaller. But this is extremely important, this section here, because you uh, you need that on there so the zombie dogs do not uh, jump over your hatch. Speaking of which, we need to go ahead and craft up our hatches. So let's do wooden hatches. Let's do five of those. I usually do five. Uh, they usually don't get through five of those. And then we also need a door as well. One door and five hatches. Let's put the door in first, right on the last block, and we'll rotate it so it's nice and flush. So there's our escape hatch. And now it's time to put in our hatches. You can put this, start it right at the edge here, but I like to give the zombies one block. I like to go back one more block. That way, when uh, when they come up, they actually have a place where they can stand without being out here. That way they don't jump on each other's heads and all that fun stuff. So give them one block and then just put these down. 
And the way you want these down is you want the hinge facing away from you. So just one, two, three, four, and five, just like that. And there you go. That's all you need. So again, as I said, the strongest parts of this design, the things you want to be the strongest are the hatches, the door frame here, these blocks here. So the ramp blocks here, the blocks on the front. You want your, your plates to be as strong as you possibly can. And then you want your, to, your pillars to be as strong as you can. Those are the main areas of the base. If you wanted, you could leave the walls and you could leave the ceiling wood if you really wanted to, because they barely ever get touched. The things you really want to focus on are the hatches, the ramps, the plates, and the pillars. But that's it. Simple as that, guys. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to demonstrate the wood block here. Let me grab a weapon. And of course, we're going to be grabbing our favorite weapon in the game, the steel club. And I'm going to spawn in some zombie jerks. Let's bring in 25 Arlene's. Zombie Arlene. There she is. Let's get their AI turned back on. Hello, ladies. Come on up. And I will show you this design in action. So they come walking right up. And all you gotta do is swing away. Now if they happen to break one of the hatches, oh no! Step yourself back and keep on swinging. And you can do this multiple times. That's why you have multiple hatches. Because the hatches will, will break over time. I mean, that, that's an inevitability. But boom, I had just basic wood hatches and they were able to get down through two of them. But we took out 25 zombie Arlene's, no problem whatsoever. So imagine if we had these up to iron or we had these up to uh, the vault doors, <laughs> they would last a very long time. But it's as simple as that. They walk up into the death hole. Uh, you stand behind the hatches and you swing away. Or if you have a firearm, like I said, Nice orderly line of zombie death. It's it's pretty darn sweet. And if you look at, at the outside, the re you'll see they did a little damage to the walls, a little damage here, and then, of course, the hatches they, they damaged to try to get through to get to you, and then a little bit here. So this area here is what you're really going to want to focus on when you're talking about upgrading. So as you progress, you'll want to make sure and upgrade these blocks first, upgrade your hatches, and upgrade your pillars down here. Generally speaking, these won't get touched, but if they do get attacked, that is no bueno. If they take out those pillars, your whole structure is coming down, so you want to get those as strong as possible. Again, they generally speaking do not target the pillars, but it's it's a good idea to keep get them uh, uh, to be as strong as you can. So the last thing I want to talk about before uh, we wrap this bad boy up, you saw how I made this out of wood. You can make this out of out of flagstone just as easy. The material cost for this is is nothing. Flagstone is made out of cobblestone. It, it takes four cobblestone rocks in order to make one flagstone block. You can get cobblestone in almost any POI, the little blue pallets. Dig that up whenever you come across it. Cobblestone is a very, very valuable resource. Plus it is extremely, extremely easy to make. All it takes is one rock and one piece of clay and you can make yourself up some cobblestone rocks. You can craft cobblestone rocks in your inventory. You don't need a workbench. Same thing with the flagstone blocks. You can craft those up in your, in your inventory. You do not need a workbench. The flagstone block costs four cobblestone rocks and you don't need, I think you only need uh, a few hundred flagstone blocks to complete this entire build. It's, it's really, really simple. Plus I would recommend um, iron doing iron hatches instead of wood hatches. They only cost 40 iron. They're very, very cheap and you can upgrade them a couple of times as well. I would recommend the iron. They are they are a lot more durable and they're really super cheap. You can get iron everywhere. On day one, you should have easily have at least a, a few hundred iron uh, kicking around. So, so while you can make the death hole out of wood and it is just as effective, I would recommend um, getting yourself some cobblestone. Get, get yourself some cobblestone rocks and actually do start this design, start this build out of the flagstone blocks instead of wood. It, it'll, 
it'll save you a lot of time um, it'll be a lot more durable and plus then you can you can upgrade directly into concrete and then from concrete into the final product of steel so one more thing i want to talk about is bird defense so on my final final version here i have the smg turrets the smg turrets are not going to be accessible at the early parts of the game but honestly in the early parts of the game you really don't need them you can actually make yourselves the uh, wood spike traps and they work just as well. All you have to do is get on top of the roof of the death hole here and just line the ceiling, just line the roof here with the wood spike traps until you have access to the SMG turrets and can build yourself a little turret defense like I have over there. But this works perfectly. This works just as well. So the zombie vultures swoop down and what they do is they try to attack you from above. So as long as you add the spikes on the top like this, then the zombie vultures actually will, um, they will actually fly right down into the spikes and pretty much kill themselves. So you don't have to worry about zombie vultures, even with uh, something as simple as this. Just throw the spikes on top and you're good to go. One of the absolute best aspects of Seven Days to Die is the Blood Moon Horde. It is fun filled, exciting, and gives you a sense of purpose. It gives you something to look forward to, a goal to build towards. You want to make sure you have a nice horde base in order to fend off those zombie jerks that will be coming your way every seven nights. One of the cheapest and most effective horde bases I have ever come up with is the Death Hole. A very simple de design, yet extremely effective. The zombies pour in, you stand behind your hatches, smash them in the face with your club, shoot them in the face with your favorite gun. Simple as that, take the zombie jerks down, and you don't have to worry about a thing. The crafting cost on this bad boy is next to nothing. You can build it out of very simple resources. It's very easy to do, and it does not take a long time in order to construct. And the great thing about this base design is you can actually upgrade it as you go along and use this base design even in the very end stages of the game. So even when you have feral radiated whites and demolition zombies heading your way, you can still stand your ground and take them on at the death hole. This base is just as effective late game as it is early game. I hope you folks have found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Speaking of which, I've created a special playlist of tutorial videos with similar subject matter. You can access those videos by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.